Hello and welcome. I'm Christian Dunnerman from WatchGuyCo UK. We are a watch service and repair and restoration centre in the UK. Uh, I want to put together a series of four or five videos that address the basic issues of repairing and diagnosing uh, watch movements. Uh, this video is the introduction and the further four will follow. Uh, what we're going to address is the effect of dirt in a movement, um, secondly the effect of magnetism uh, on the balance and hairspring, um, then we will look at broken components and how to diagnose them and we will also look at the issue of overwinding, does that exist, can you overwind a watch uh, and address that myth. Um, a watch movement is a fairly simple mechanical mechanism. If you look at it at first, it, it appears to be very complex, but that is really due to the size of the components. Uh, once you get used to working with watches and you've looked at a movement under the microscope, you will actually see that there's very little in there. You have five wheels, you have a pallet fork, and you have a balance, and that is already the gear train. Uh, and that's the main bit of the watch that makes it tick. It, it, there isn't anything that changes during the uh, movements working. You cannot change gears like in a car. Uh, the only adjustments that you can make are a beat rate and beat error. We will look at that later on the time grapher. Uh, so there's very little to do if you compare that. I, I used to be a German master of trades car mechanic. I worked 10 years in that industry. And if I look at a six gear automatic gearbox of a modern car, and I look at a watch movement, there is no comparison. Uh, in, in an automatic gearbox you have all sorts of gears that move along that are actuated uh, mechanically or electromechanically, that are electronically driven, uh, there are sensors, um, there are all sorts of components and you can't just look at an automatic gearbox and uh, say, oh yeah, I can see if I turn this, that bit doesn't move properly, so that's, uh, that might be broken. The, the diagnosis of, of an automatic gearbox is highly complex. Uh, you will have to look at what the electronics tell you. You, will, you have to take the whole thing apart. And you will only find the fault if you measure every single component and compare that to the allowed tolerances. Uh, and that way you can find out what's wrong. Once you have found out what's wrong, you've got to change the, the damaged components and then you've got to adjust the whole thing. Uh, and that is highly complex as well. So we go back to watch movement. There's very little to adjust. There's five gears. There's a balance. Uh, and there's a pallet fork. Uh, so it, it, it's simple. And that's what we're going to look at and that's what I'm going to show you. So the, the skill of the watch repairer compared to that of the car mechanic is manipulating small parts. That isn't easy, you need a steady hand uh, and above all a lot of patience. Um, that is the, the, the big difference, otherwise uh, it's a fairly simple job, I shouldn't say that, but that's the way it is. Um, diagnosis is also a lot simpler than with any car component, I would say. Um, again, we have a limited amount of components in a watch. We can observe the fault by putting the watch in a time graph. So we have an instrument there for the diagnosis. We will look at that in a minute. Um, that time graph will show us the beat rate. That's how fast the movement ticks, the beat arrow, uh, giving us the difference between the left swing and the right swing of the balance, and the amplitude. That is how far the balance swings around, that's measured in degrees. And with that alone and our ears and our eyes, we can tell what's wrong with the movement. Um, as we've said, there, there are certain faults. Dirt is probably the most common problem that we encounter. Uh, magnetism hasn't, happens quite often. These are the things we look for. We look at the components under the microscope, one after the other, and we know what's wrong very, very quickly. That's what we're going to show. Before we get into the individual videos, we will have a look at the time graph. I've got a watch on here, ticking happily away. That's a vintage watch from the 60s, so the movement isn't brand new. And we will now look what it does on the time graph. On the top left here, we have 
the beat rate and it says minus five minus seven seconds per day that's how fast the movement is running and considering the age of the watch minus five seconds per day is very acceptable indeed this is the amplitude at the moment this shows us 253 degrees of the swing of the balance 270 is ideal that would be a maybe a more modern watch that hasn't been worn for a long time uh, but this is acceptable indeed i mean this watch is over 60 years old so that's very good and on the right here we have the bead error that shows us 0 0.2 milliseconds that is the difference between the left and the right swing of the balance and again that is very much within the tolerance of what we accept so this movement is running nicely it does not require a service uh, it's in good condition we can tell that straight away down here we have the bead uh, rate so it, it does 18,000 swings per hour and it has a lift angle of 48 degrees uh, that isn't that important we'll look at we might get into that later but that's just an adjustment you can look that up every movement has a lift angle normally 52 degrees and some movements have a different lift angle there are lists of that to look that up no big deal um, okay that's the end of our first video uh, of our introduction and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you will watch the other parts. Thank you very much.